Hello and welcome to another Dynamic CCTV technical video. Today we're going to take a quick look at the Ubiquiti Edge Switch 8 XP. It's an industrial strength uh, ruggedized switch designed with vandal resistance in mind and also to be utilised in those extreme locations. Tough metal and rubber outer casing. Really good operating temperature range of down to minus 25 degrees up to 55 degrees. Weighs about 1.2 kilos. It's got a mains adapter on the back so PSU is incorporated into the unit. No separate PSU is supplied. Eight PoE ports on the front, up to a thousand meg data pass through. That can be set to auto negotiable depending on what devices you're connecting. It's also got a dedicated management port as well on the front. It is a layer two managed switch. The dedicated management port allows you to log in through that port to do any configuring, any alert or log interrogating you need to do or any uh, status checking you need to do on the switch as well. It's also got a lot of built in handy advanced tools as well, which allow you to diagnose issues that you might have on the network as well. Some of which we'll have a look at later in this video. The PoE on the front is one of the main selling points of the switch. It actually supports conventional 48 volt PoE and bespoke 24 volt PoE as well. A lot of Ubiquiti's wireless devices will run off a bespoke 24 volt injector. What this switch allows you to do is eliminate the need for the injector and use this particular switch to power all your devices. Your bespoke 24 volt wireless device can be powered off one port whereas the second port can be using conventional 48 volt PoE for your, the likes of your IPC cameras, your IP detectors and also your IP horns. So you've got a, a total of 150 watt power budget with the switch. At 24 volts it can handle up to 11.5 watts per port and at 48 volts it can handle up to 23 watts per port up to a total of 150 watt total budget. So if we quickly power this unit up, quickly put the kettle lead in the front we can see it quickly fire up so you've got your initial link light come on these lights on these ports will obviously light up as and when you connect devices so what we can do is we can quickly grab a ubiquity wireless device which will use a 24 volt bespoke voltage quickly power that into port one and what we should see once the switch is booted is this actual unit should fire up there we go so you can see there so this has been pre-configured this port to to be operating on a 24 volt voltage they're not auto detectable you have to select what each port is going to run at in terms of poe voltage from the menu we'll obviously take a look at that later in the video but there's your wireless device powering up we can also take our conventional poe device which is a hikvision ipc turret camera and fire that into port two like so and we can see there we've got our led lighting which indicates that the cameras going through its initial boot stage. The ports can be pre-configured to whichever PoE output voltage you require. It tidies the whole install up, eliminates additional cabling, eliminates the injectors and allows you to utilise all devices from a given location with this single switch. It's also, as I mentioned earlier, got a lot of advanced configuration tools built in. Ping Watchdog, Auto Power Cycle, it's got VLAN built in spanning tree protocol and configurable alerts can also be managed off ubiquity's own unms servers as well which is a server that you can add all of ubiquity products to for management obviously viewing and status viewing so we'll leave the switch fire up with these devices connected and we'll take a look at some of the settings and some advanced configuration tools within the user-friendly interface Okay, I'm now at the login screen for the Edge Switch 8 XP. So the first thing I need to do is log in to its web front end. Default login username and password is UBNT. Quickly type that in. First thing that we'll see when we log into the unit is the actual status screen of the switch, which we can see appear now. This will pretty much show you everything that's going on with the switch at that particular given time. So at the top we can see we've got a connection at the management port. We've got also parts two and four in use. On the top right we can see the total throughput of the unit, transmit and receive. A little bit further down the page we've got the ports themselves and the status of the ports so we can see that they're all enabled. Ports 2 and 4 have got 100 megabits auto negotiable connection. Port 1 is set to 24 volts and the rest are set to 48 volts conventional PoE. A little bit further down we can see what the individual throughput of each port is, what the receive and transmit packet data is, a line graph and a pie chart which indicates what each port's doing in terms of transmission and receive traffic. So we've got ports 4 and 2, so we've got green and blue in the pie chart. You can see that every other port has got its own dedicated colour so you can, it's easily defined on the pie chart. If we move up to the top and click on the device tab we can see we've got some of the network settings of this particular switch the IP address 
net mask is there we've also got the gateway we can set it to static or DHCP a little bit further down the screen we've got the web server settings UNMS server settings Telnet server settings, SSH server settings are there all to be configured. We've also got an NTP client built another switch and the ability to enable and disable the system log and remote log can be done as well from this screen. At the very bottom of the screen there we've also got some options there where we can back up, upload the configuration, reboot the actual device or reset it to factory defaults as well. At the top of the screen there's an option there where we can check for a new firmware or upload a new firmware to the actual switch as well. Over onto the ports tab we can see we've got again the individual states of each port. We can power cycle each port by clicking on that little tab there which would then perform a reboot on the actual connected device. A little bit further down we can select which PoE standard we want to use for that particular port so 24 volts 48 or off. As I said earlier it's not auto negotiable in terms of it's the PoE voltage you have to set that manually for each port and you can also change the name and enable disable the port as well from there and there's some configuration settings for alerts on each port which will go through to your alert log so you can put bandwidth quarters in and if it rises above or below for transmission or receive then the actual switch will put that into the alert log it's something that you can obviously interrogate later on there's also a ping watchdog setting there which allows you to ping a designated IP address and if replies aren't received then that would perform a power cycle on the device as well hopefully clearing any issues that device might have encountered as well so that's an added fail safe for a particular device that the switch is connected to as I said earlier you can set VLANs up on this particular switch there's an existing VLAN already on it which covers all the ports and in an untag format they're all the trunk ports are ticked and it's also got the management tab ticked on it as well which basically means the management port on the end negotiates through the same VLAN as well obviously you we can just click the add tab there and that allows us to add an additional VLAN to the actual switch and obviously set up each port individually we've also got an alert setting here which is the actual client system log and alert log obviously you can see the system log at the bottom and then obviously you've got your alert log at the top which is where individual alerts for each port will come through as individually set for bandwidth quarters etc so that'll come through there as well so if we go across to the, the top right hand corner we can see there's a little drop down list here where we've got some additional tools which can be used for various diagnostics so first of all we've got your mac address table which we can click on and i'll just obviously allow this to run so this will just show us the connected devices and obviously what the corresponding mac addresses for those devices are so there we can quickly click on it again there we are should load up now so you can see there we've got obviously port 2 and 4, we've got two connected devices and there's the MAC address for each one listed. So that'll display a table of connected devices. We've also got a ping tool, so that allows us to ping an IP address on the network that the switch is connected through. And obviously monitor the ping, send and receive and also response time. So we can put a designated IP in, so if we try that one there, 129, click start. And we can see the pings coming through there, the response time as well and obviously at the bottom we can see the average, the minimum, the average and the maximum response time in milliseconds there. So we can see there that that's an actual active IP address that we've had replies back from each ping and also the times in which we've received those replies are more than acceptable as well. We've also got a, a trace route tool which allows us to put in an IP address and then trace its path, to ping the IP address and trace its path through to it. If we use the Google DNS server and press start to that we should see the path it takes in order to reach its location and also the time on the right hand side in which it took through each hop so you can see there the first one is our internal gateway and then the, all of these addresses below are external hops or pass through on its way to the DNS server at the bottom there it's its last stop and obviously you've got all of the response times there as well and the last option is a discovery tool so this is a piece of software that you can use standalone but it is actually built into the switch and it basically lists and shows all the ubiquity devices on the network so you can see there we've got our red switch xp there listed but obviously if there was various other ubiquity products they'd all be listed within that screen as well if we quickly go back to the device screen and move down you can see there we've got a few other options there the dis device discovery there enable that enables it to be seen by the dis device discovery tool system account allows you to change the username of the login of the switch it's got a jumbo frame setting for faster gigabit transmission which you can enable sets a, a larger MTU it's also got a spanning tree protocol which is a useful tool for detecting loops on the network and also optimum traffic paths for data as well 
So they're just a few of the onboard settings and diagnostics tools that you can take advantage of with the Edge Switch 8 through configuring the switch and also running diagnostics and fault finding on site. So I hope you found this video interesting and take on board some of the useful features that this ruggedized switch has. Uh, thanks for watching this video. I will see you again soon.